It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anako's here. He's on his way to uh, Los Angeles, but we got him at the airport. Renee Ritchie from Montreal. And lo and behold, Alex Lindsay's back. A great Mac Break Weekly is ahead. We take a look at the new iPad Air. And then more. Stay right here. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 375, recorded November 5th, 2013, Angry Santa. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code MACBREAK1113. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash MACBREAK. And by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 250,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash MBW to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers your Apple needs. Yes, it's here, ladies and gentlemen, thinner, lighter, why it's practically floating away. It's iPad Air time at Mac Break Weekly. And for that, we've gathered together the uh, usual stalwarts. We've got Andy Anako, who's flying out for a speech. Where are you right now, Andy? Uh, I'm still in Boston. I've, uh, I'm, I'm a temporary admiral. Please don't tell them I'm just a commander, or else they'll probably kick me out. Uh, so <laughs> if I'm, I'm in the Admirals Club uh, for the free Wi Fi. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, Ensign like, okay. and Atko, what are you doing in here? I know, I know, I know. It's like, <laughs> but it's. I, I feel like this is this is like one of the few chances that I know I'm going to be able to, to talk to real human beings for a good two hours. If I if I <laughs> if I break my appointment here, I'll lose the act. So, I told him the strawberry ice cream was in the Admiral's Club, but he didn't believe me. Uh, that's a very poor Humphrey Bogart. Look who's here, Alex Lindsay. I am. He is uh, visiting us from Kilgali. Y yeah. Where are you actually from? Um. Where am I actually from? Yeah, I mean, 35,000 Most feet. recently. No, no, yeah, no, more Kigali. likely. You were. You were just in Kigali. Last week. Kigali. So we, we were doing... Rwanda. So we did live streaming for the... Um, it's called Transform Africa. So it's basically tech leaders and actually seven uh, heads of state. So have seven presidents. And, wow. and then all of the ministers and everything else talking about wow. how technology is... Uh, making a difference in Africa. That's really And big. so they were, they were dealing with, you know, cyber, all the stuff we talk about, cybersecurity, right. um, uh, you know, using it in agriculture, health, um, and how, how it's being used in Africa. And then also what's coming up next. So like Rwanda's rolling out LTE, um, which is huge. Do you have huge. a sense that because they uh, are behind, in effect, having now started, started the infrastructure, that they are an invest ahead because they didn't have the legacy stuff that we have to deal with? For the countries that are willing to invest, absolutely. So a country like Rwanda... Um, one they of just the, go straight to LTE. Well, but a lot of countries are not. So a lot right. of the a lot of the countries. So it's it's more expensive to roll out LTE from a hardware sp perspective than than Edge and right. 3G and so on right. and so forth. But it's a lot cheaper, and you can support a lot more people with with it once it's rolled out. And so a lot of the countries are still India, and a lot of the other countries are still going. Hey, we're doing 3G. Right. Uh, what Rwanda did is they spent 140 million dollars with <sighs> Korea. Wow. And they're just rolling. They're they Rwanda has committed to providing LTE to 95% of the population in three years. It's basically universal internet access. Yeah. And, and they have, and they, and they have the fiber backbone to do it, Wow, you know? And so, so they were showing that, <laughs> of course, no one's on the network yet. So they were doing LTE tests. Oh man. 100 and, 105 uh, meg megabits a second you were, you on were, the cell phone. Uh, we wanted to talk to you last week from uh, Rwanda and it was kind of, it was uh, for one of, for, for one of a, uh, Horseshoe, the battle was lost because you had what was it? Oh yeah, it was it was incredible bandwidth. Yeah, but you had no way to do it, use it. You yeah, well, what happened was so Skype. so I had a hundred megabit connection in Rwanda, 
And so I was like, this is going to be great. Except the place that I had it, it turned out there was this huge, like, dignitaries and everything else were having dinner there. Oh. So, so it was like, you know, so the oh. one place where I had the fiber drop, I thought no one was going to be there. So I figured it's going to be 10, 9 o'clock at night. You don't mind if I do a podcast. It's just out of my way. <laughs> well, and then I thought, I said, can I, can I go into that little room? And I was like, they're like, yeah, sure. They told me that in the afternoon. So I, t I went around to the room, and that was, like, where the buffet was. Oh, you know, and so oh, so that I got, it was, uh, it was, it was sad. Because it was, I had, I had the connection. I had the, and it was. Anyway, it was. Um, well, you're here now. It was. Uh, it and was the band cool. was superb here, by the way. The bandwidth is you're superb. Realistic, very real. Yes, well, I would you know, say I'm more rendering, than 4K. I'm, I'm rendering well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> hey, look who's also here with his iPad Air, Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Look, hey, Leo. We can see it's like a mirror in reverse and upside down. That's very it's nice. It's amazing. It's what an stuck effect in the iPad Air. It's very realistic. <laughs> Hi, Renee. It it's the thinnest, lightest, fastest iPad ever, Leo, again. How could it not be? Would you release something that were less thin, less fast, less the good? The iPad 3. They did. Yeah. <laughs> they did, the iPad 2. Which, by the way, apparently is still selling pretty well, which is very strange. Um, before we get to the iPad, because I know you really want to get to the iPad, did you get the uh, picture of Andy set up yet, Chad, on your email? Andy sent it to you. All right. Before we get to that, then, let me show you this. A robot, there. Look at this. This is how Andy. This is how Andy rolls. He's looking straight into a corner, but you never know it. He's emoting. That's awesome, Andrew. I like the light Green on the back. Admiral Lounge is amazing. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know that they filled half a season of How I Met Your Mother right in this exact cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a video of a rock paper scissors robot that you cannot beat. You know, the reason you cannot beat it is it can tell what you're going to do before you do it. <laughs> That's not fair. It takes 60 milliseconds <laughs> for you to form the thing that you're going to do with your fist and do it. In, but in 20 milliseconds, it can sense it. It can tell ahead of time. You cannot beat it. <laughs> it will beat you every time. Okay, I just thought we'd start with something. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> Stop developing robots immediately. We're not going to win. I, this all I'm doing, I'm not going to play the thumb wrestling with just it. That's all I'm you. saying. Skynet's coming, kids. It's first rock, paper, scissors. That's then Thumor nuclear war. I'm yes. just telling you. Oh, man. It's, so you it can literally, game. it literally senses about what you're about to do. It's a cheap bot. Well, you know, in our defense, that's a pretty crap scissors it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. It's all over for the humans, folks. But we still have iPads, which I'm that. now starting to think is maybe a stealth, you know, uh, from and the that's robot how get world. Between the iPads and the glass, you know, and just... We did. Opinion. If you didn't see on Sunday, we had a Twit special, I think it was 172, where uh, iFixit tore it down. Yep. which was kind of fun to look at the inside guts of it. And uh, once again, not only thinner, lighter, not only the lightest, thinnest, fastest iPad we've ever made, the least repairable and the least recyclable <laughs> iPad they've ever made. The whole You might as well just encase it in a block of glue. Yep. Yeah, Phil, uh, didn't Phil Schiller make a joke during the, the, the presentation that hey, it's 100% it's recyclable. If you don't want it, someone else will, will definitely take it off your hands. <laughs> That's the recycling. <laughs> That's the recycling. Um uh, yeah, it was interesting, and uh, Kyle Weens and the great team at iFixit, if you haven't seen that, uh, do watch it, because it was kind of fun to watch. Um, they The first thing they do is they, uh, they you know, you know you ever if you've ever sprained an ankle, you know, you sometimes you have these worms with beads inside that you put in the freezer, or you could put in the microwave, it could be hot or cold. So they microwave it, they sell this thing, uh, but it's just like the one you buy in the store for a sprain, and you microwave it so it's warm, there it is, and they put it on there and they let it sit. And it warms it up sufficiently that the glue softens. And then they use guitar picks all around the edge to pry it loose. These guys are it's pretty amazing. professionals. They say the only, there, there's the guitar picks. The only thing you don't want to do is puncture the lithium ion batteries. By the way, like as with most previous versions of the iPad, it's almost all battery. The motherboard right. is almost the same size as an iPhone motherboard. It's tiny, just this little thing. But the battery is like most of it. And that's how they got good battery life. Pretty amazing battery life. Once again, a non-tech test. There it is. Tested the uh, iPad Air as a MiFi. So if you turn off the screen, you turn off everything, you just use it as a hotspot. More than 24 hours. Wow. Longer than a MiFi. Well, because it's got a lot of battery. Do you do that all the time? Yeah. 
I do that all the time. And yesterday I was testing it and I was getting 95 down on a Rogers LTE <sighs> at, at the coffee shop. Take that, kill golly. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because Rogers must, must provision tethering differently than because I can do 50, 65 down on an iPhone or an iPad by itself. But if I tether them, it just shoots right up. Wow. Now, how much are they charging Lovely. you per gig? Uh, I, I pay 30 bucks for six gigs. Oh, that's that's good. pretty good, actually, because I think that, that that's the one advantage that I've that I've seen as as we start to see companies charging per gig, is it does give them a reason to give you fast con a fast connection because sure. then you're they burning make, up. They make they're money. making money. You know, right. they're they're you know it's, you know, before they capped it all because it was free or it was limited. You know, it was all part of a package, and now they can charge you for it. What is the? Yeah. Did you, you don't have one yet, huh? I don't have one. No. I've been I've been in Africa. You haven't had a chance. No. Uh, we fortunately, John Slania, thank you, John, went to the Apple Store uh, on uh, Friday, and got a couple for us. So I was able to get uh, this one. Did you get one yet, Andy? Yep, I got this one in the slick flesh colored case. <laughs> wow, it looks so just like a human. <laughs> it's, it's it's yeah it's it no one's flesh is that color. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know. You know, you get you, you don't get a lot, lot of sunlight out there. When you're <laughs> Make Andy look rosy. Is there a cadaver Fine color? Because I problem. think that's actually what you got. <laughs> um, yeah, I like it. I mean, it's nice. You know what? The first thing I, I surprised myself because it isn't. Well, I was trying to decide Retina Mini or mm -hmm. this, and I was thinking, oh, maybe you know. And people were saying. I think MG Siegler said you can hold it in one hand. I don't know. MG must have very big hands because yeah. I can't hold this with one hand. Uh, the the win is just it. the ability of how long you can hold it in two hands as opposed to <laughs> at one. Oh, look, Although, Renee. Did you play basketball? Right there. Big Canadian hands, Leo. Big oh, Canadian God. hands. Oh, God. You guys are huge. Oh, I, don't see what, I don't see what your problem is. It's just... What? Maybe I have small hands. <laughs> I didn't know this all this time. I've had small hands. Yeah. Hello. With the case you could do it, too? Yeah. Hey, Renee. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Going to the game today? But wait a minute. Is it comfortable <laughs> holding that with one hand? Yeah. Or are you I'm feeling a little good. tendon stretch? It feels no. like I'm on the bridge like of the Starship Enterprise, Leo. <laughs> Just, you know. Yeah. Beat me up. All right. All right. I take it back. I did notice, though, that one of the things immediately I noticed is that I tended to want to use it in portrait mode. And that uh, what I was really pleased to see is that typing uh, is very natural with the two thumb typing approach in uh, portrait mode. It's fantastic. And I think that that is. And it's, what is it? It's not very much. It's maybe a half an inch off the width, but it's right. enough. It's enough to make it Just easier. enough so that you can do this thumb typing. And I tried it on a regular iPad, and I, I couldn't do it. I still don't. Again, I, with I my baby hands, I couldn't. <laughs> so maybe I love it. I, the touch type, the, I, it was the first thing I tried, and it's fantastic. And your thumbs can meet in the middle, and it's just, yeah. I use a portrait now. It's so good. Okay, so I'm not alone. So it, it did. Yeah. It seemed like all of a sudden I'm using it in a portrait mode in a very, it, very naturally without even thinking about it. Right. It, just, it seemed natural. Um. And it is, it's its the right aspect ratio, I think, for reading and stuff in portrait mode. 16.9 is weird in portrait mode. It's too tall. Yeah, even the Kindle, uh, the new, uh, even the uh, Kindle Fire, I mean, which I got to use last month, it's kind of weird when you have a little bit of stretch. It's not its not a big problem, but it's especially a problem on the Surface tablet where you it will rotate to, to portrait mode, but when you re use it that way, it's telling you, it's, it's, it's like any of us trying to hold the iPad with one hand. We can do it, but we're making it very clear. <laughs> please make us not have to do this anymore because this is very awkward for us. Yeah. Now, uh, while DisplayMate does these tests every... And I don't know if you... You, you guys can say whether this is, these are good not or not, but uh, DisplayMate did its uh, regular tests comparing the Kindle Fire HDX, the iPad Air, and the Google Nexus 10 and uh, said that the... And they're talking about uh, screen quality, sharpness, um, I presume color gamut and all of that. And they said that the fire beat the air. Not that the air was bad, but the fire was better. Well, that, that was one of the things that they were promoting uh, at, at the get-go, that this is the, this is, has the full RGB range uh, that, that's available. It's the, first, it's the most color-compatible screen that's they, they feel they're saying is on the market today whether or not it's something that really is visible to the human eye as opposed to test equipment is right. another matter entirely especially we consider that people are really doing a lot of photo apps they're really doing a lot of like visually intensive and curious things on an ipad whereas anything with a kindle name on it is chiefly going to be used for books and some movies so so uh black in this in this diagram from the displaymate black is srgb the standard color gamut and as you can see both the air and the fire pretty close not perfect 
But uh, the Google Nexus 10, terrible. <laughs> it was about it was 50%. an interesting discussion on Twitter from a bunch of iOS designers who were saying that instead of Retina, they'd prefer either 10-bit color or 120 uh, hertz refresh rate. And both those things could maybe make a better difference for you. Yeah, well, well I, we've reached the point where Retina is kind of ho-hum. Everything's Retina, right? Yeah. If it's not Retina, it's like, well, what's wrong with this? Well, I can say it. the re 120 refresh rate is much more computationally intensive. Than, sure. Than, yeah. um, and and I, I, I think that the, the value of 10-bit display is pretty low <laughs> it's for photographers I mean, for, and people even like photographers that. i mean you know yeah. you know you know i don't know I, I, compared we'd to re resolution test, though, alex we'd <laughs> what we'd win the test though we would win the test yes, exactly. we would we would get we would get a gold star you're right um we, I just we could we could each we could each write a 240 word essay 2400 word essay about how but it's the quality it's the attention the detail and the cumulative effect of reconsidering every fundamental decision that adds up to a greater and more profound final product. Exactly. As you said that, Andy, I saw the balls bouncing around the screen. <laughs> it's, <amazing>. it's thinner, <laughs> it's lighter, it's the best iPad we've ever made. Uh, apparently, the Kindle Fire is the most accurate, consider considerably more. They have very good color accuracy than the Air, than the Nexus 10, a distant third. <laughs> very, it's a year old, though, the Nexus 10. Yeah, yeah I think that's Samsung unfair. We're waiting. A year old. Yeah, we're waiting for the next Nexus 10. So, And Samsung has never wowed anyone with their displays, right. I mean, from Pentile on down. But essentially, uh, very close between the HDX. I was surprised, actually, because the HDX is cheap and the iPad Air, very close. Uh, both uh, impressive mobile displays, the most impressive mobile displays currently available. High resolution. The interesting about the Air is, I mean, every hundredth of an inch they took off of that was an, it was like walking a mile through a desert in terms right. of engineering resources. Yeah, you can it's imagine. It's hugely difficult. So they managed to get this screen. I mean, it just looks like it's a little bit thinner, but to get that screen and that battery life in a device this thin was a Herculean task of engineering. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I, gotta, I really got to ask that question. If you took the amount of money and the amount of effort that they took to make this device thinner, and I don't think there's any people who are complaining that, oh, the, what, I, the, what I really don't like about the 9.7-inch iPad is that it's just so damn thick. I mean, if you if if you took those resources and added extra features, like if you figure out a way to keep it as thick as it ever was, but give it a pressure sensitive tablet, excuse me, a, a touch interface, you can use it for for art and for other input stuff. Wouldn't that be really really cool? Or improve the display in other ways? I don't know so if you'd I, even I, notice I, one point. What is it? One point four millimeters. Would you notice yeah. the difference? It, I mean, it, not, not, I, I don't. I personally yeah, it wouldn't. Pretty, it's, it's the weight that really sells this. Yeah. The, the weight here well, is, is really wild. It's, it is, point four, it's point 0.4 pounds lighter. And it's a lot smaller. And and this is the the width difference in width is really the biggest uh, difference. The height is about the same. It definitely feels a lot. And the bezels different. are, of course, the it's white le reason. It's less intimidating. Yeah. Mm. But it, it is not, it it is not a mini. It. I was, I'm quick to say, now having held it, is I still think I want to get the mini with Retina as my preferred iPad. It's not quite the mini, especially now that the mini is spec-wise identical. We think, yeah, but, but here's the, here's a question. But what are what are you planning on using the mini for? Everything I use an iPad for and more. Really, Simpsons. I might eat off, eat off of it. I don't know. <laughs> no, I use the mini at home. I I keep my my maxi pad here, and I keep my mini pad at home. <laughs> Oh, God, please don't say that. <laughs> I do the opposite. I use the mini for traveling and tethering, and I use the big iPad at home for videos and comic books. And Well, remember, the big uh, iPad stays here. It doesn't go anywhere ever. It's what I use for iPad today in this show. Um, okay. And the mini is the one I use as I'm, you know, in the house. All right, let's face it, in the can. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and I do hold it with one hand. <laughs> what? What? Leo, Leo, I, I just want—I just want to just make, make an observation here. You are one more such observation from turning this into an episode of Girls. I mean, you're going to just be naked you, on the next show. I'm going to play naked ping, ping pong. pong. Yeah, naked ping pong next on a very special. Have you, have you gotten the new? Have you gotten the new? Um, the, the Not yet. It comes to it comes uh, Friday. They called me up. Apparently, a truck has to deliver it. It's so big. Really? Truck delivery company said, yeah, we got... I said, Did you get the whole it? toilet or just the... I got the whole toilet. Oh, yeah. He said, okay. yeah, I I said what's in it? He off. said, uh, it's ceramic. He said, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> oh, you got the whole thing. Oh, well, yeah, I figured. Because if you get the whole thing, then the toilet raises up to greet you. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the toilet raises up to the greet you in I brought the that up. The only reason I brought that up is that, is that you know, what, what's really missing is an app on your iPad that just, you know, can control the... Ah, uh, they have a remote, but it seems silly to no, have it's a remote. Just, if you had it, if, not to mention the hygienic, I don't think anyone wants hygienicity to... of the idea of a remote <laughs> for a toilet is, but oh, it is a touchless no. toilet, right? You never exactly. touch nothing. Exactly, it touches you, but you, you don't you touch it. it. <laughs> you use it for the touches same reason you. you use the 
phone app for your Tesla for your other car so that you're in bed, you want to like push a button, have it nice and warm so that when you actually use it, there's, there's no, you know, sudden shock of, of the morning. Actually, it's always warm. Oh, really? They say, well, you can decide whether you want to let it I thought it, cold. it warmed up to greet you again also. Mm, it, it sees it can, you coming. But, but it, it opens up. It warms up. The water starts warming up. Yeah, it's, There's a little fan. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You don't want, hey, beyond Gizwiz. you don't want cold water on your hoo-ha. That is not good. <laughs> that water. No, not the bowl Andy's, water. Andy's taking a moment. <laughs> Andy is officially I'm taking just, a moment. I'm just taking no, I'm, I'm just thinking about my grandfather who was a goat herder until age 12 or 13 and then made it to the United States of America, un uh, suffering unbearable hardship in his first two or three years to start a new life and a new family with very, very little resources. And then knowing that or the, that his grandchild's generation really, really wants a toilet that is self-warming and, and coddles it and says nice things about it while it's being. And that's, and that's the, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just not sure that I could have, I could have survived as a goat herder for one thing. Well, and the, and then the worst the gumption to step. I, the worst part is if you spend too much time, I spent six weeks in Japan on a film and, uh, and, and you, and you get anywhere that doesn't have the, those, those types of, of toilets. You, you immediately go, what? I'm in some sign of slum here. I mean, what is wrong here? <laughs> I spent a month in Guangzhou. They had a plank in a ditch. It's really yeah. Parts yeah. yeah it's the I mean, I'm, I'm used to places where you're lucky if you don't get a splinter. All right. We're going <laughs> to, uh, we're going to, we're going to take a break. And then I'm going to show you, speaking of Guangdong province, my new iPhone picked up from China. Ooh. Oh, this might be a little different than what you're expecting. But first, a word from Shutterstock.com. Shutterstock is the place to go for over 30 million royalty-free stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and not, and videos, too. In fact, if you click the footage tab at the top of the screen, 1.3 million royalty-free stock videos, too. I love Shutterstock. I know you'll love it, too. In fact, I encourage you just to sign up for the free Shutterstock account because uh, you don't have, you know, it's, it's very simple. You don't have to give them a credit card. Each week, you'll get a free photo. That's, you know part of the deal you get the newsletter of course giving you ideas updates and of course they always have new stuff i think more than a hundred thousand new photos every week and you can use their light boxes which is a very nice feature the light box allows you to save images um as you as you travel through your life and uh, use them for inspiration share them with colleagues share them with others and of course you can use the amazing shutterstock search so let's search for a hap you can search for a noun like toilet but wouldn't you prefer to search for a happy toilet? So you can actually use adjectives along with a noun. And, wow, you wouldn't think there'd be so many happy toilet images. <laughs> but, but there are. Um, and we're just continuing along this. Uh, why not? You know, we're here. Oh, this guy's a little too happy. Oh, I don't know if we should have shown that on the show. Shutterstock. There's an image for every concept, every idea. Their search is great. They also have the, <laughs> the color wheel that lets you uh, say, I want happy blue toilets, you know, or any color to match because you understand you want to match the the theme of your website or your publication. And the key is, is that you're going to get, anytime you're using stock photography, we use a lot of stock photography, uh, you know, you, you have, you know that the licensing sorted out, you know that you have a high quality image, you right. know that, you know, and it's really built for what you need. Um, it is really the key to the operation i mean you know to, to you know as far as when you're putting together any kind of website you know a lot a lot of the images that you see on you know blogs and news sites and everything else that our close-ups are coming are, a lot that's, of them that's from stock photography stock. i mean yeah, you know, they're, they're not trying to figure stock. out how to do it themselves no in fact, i used to i used to try to figure out like how am i gonna take a photo of this and then i realized i can just go look at the bottom of a lot of pages you'll always say a lot of times you'll see courtesy image shutterstock it's very very popular if you decide hey i i think i need this you can buy image packs you can do the subscription that's what we do 25 images mm -hmm. a day that's for the company uh use the offer code macbreak 1113 for november 13 november 2013 1113 and you'll get 25 off that's a good deal on your new subscription or your new photo package look here's santa and then here's Angry Santa. Do you think there'll be an Angry Santa? Santa's never angry. Yes. Yes, there is. He is very angry. He's also unshaven. He is. Wait a minute, Santa! Knock it off! I think Santa just flipped me the bird. So, uh, <laughs> you see? Even Santa. That's a really angry Santa. I, I don't. I think all he's pulling there is coal. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. 
But you know, if you're going to do the post on, you know, why I'm mad this holiday season, why I hate Christmas, you might need an angry. (laughs) We need you. That's that's like the recruiting for reindeer. Here's an angry Santa girl. Mm. Here's a Santa who apparently is stuck in the chimbley. Visit at Shutterstock.com. Don't forget our offer code MacBreak1113 for 25% off. Create that free account. How hard is it to get the iPad? Are people walking into stores today and picking up iPad Airs? Uh, there is a... Um, I, I guess that was a rhetorical question. I don't know. <laughs> there, there is a, uh, a finder, right? And Apple has a, uh, a finder where you can see what the availability is store by store. At that um, moment. Shipping dates they are slipping. They all do? So it's easy to get? Well, they did. They did at launch. They had really good stock. Yeah. And then there's apparently, is this a third-party site? Apple-tracker.com? This is, it is obviously a third-party yeah. site. You know, and look, you can go, uh, you can go by store, by color, by carrier. Uh, so let's do it in our, uh, in our zip code, 94952. There aren't very many Apple stores nearby. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa, yes. Yeah, every every size except 128. Hey, the 128 seem to be selling out. I'll have to go. Because that's the way to go. I'll have to go to 4th Street. Now. Is it? Yeah. I, I just got well, the 64. I got a 60. Everything oh, I, I, I've gotten is 64 lately, and everything is full. So the only problem really is is that iCloud maxes out at 55 gigs. What is the yep. deal with that? Like, how do you make 100? How, how am I supposed to back something up to iCloud? You can't and buy more to get to 128. You can't go. You can't go higher than so. You got 128, you know, gig. Um, you, I think that their assumption is is that you're not going to back up your music or your right. movies. But I still have a problem where it's. Con- I have a whole bunch of devices, and, it, and I'm I'm constantly getting a little alert that I'm, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and also they're very very obnoxious about those alerts too. Uh, I exceeded yeah. my max about three weeks ago, and I'm definitely going to get to it. And I've been chipping down at it, but it really it's really a, a pain in the butt that every time I take out an iPhone, every time I take out an iPhone. I know they have to march past four different warning things. Sorry, this, this iPad's not been backed up in four weeks. If you know, the that gives them spicing in iCloud, oh, I'm sorry, I can't really back up your your photo cloud until it's come on. Just let, let me let me. There should be a checkbox saying, please let me say that I get it. Please let me fail on my own because you're just annoying the hell out of me right now. Yeah. But you you, you definitely should you definitely should get. It. I, I'm a big 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 supporter of getting the 128 error uh, or uh, or even the previous uh, iPads, chiefly because it gives you so much extra flexibility. Uh, you can manage a, a 16 or 32 gig uh, iPhone because it's a different kind of device. When you have the max amount of storage on the iPad, though, that means that when you're traveling, you can every single night when you get back to your hotel room, use the camera adapter to slurp all your photos off the memory card into memory. You'll go home with uh, 48 gigabytes worth of photos and raw photos uh, when you're using this thing as a backup storage device, uh, and you won't have to take your your, no- your notebook with you. And you can still have room for HD videos. You can still have room for uh, for all your audio books. You can still have room for all your music. It's just such a bummer, but the first time, probably Probably three or four weeks after you have your first uh, iPad, when it tells you, "I'm sorry, we can't back this up. We can't sync this because you're out of space." You don't ever want to run out of space. And, and, I, and, I, and I truly don't understand why Apple doesn't have doesn't just keep on scaling that that opportunity. You know, especially now that they have they have a lot of devices like this and they have a lot of users with multiple devices. It really needs to be able to go up to if people want to pay for it, up to two or three hundred you know gigs of a uh, yeah. backup. And there's no solution that's as good. You can't use, like, Google Drive, which you can buy Nothing's more. Nothing's native, yeah. There's yeah, nothing is easy. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they think that they give that. you a lot of stuff for free. Like, a lot of, the, like, the photo stream stuff is all stored, quote-unquote, for free. And a lot of the other stuff right. is stored for free. But it, uh, someone like Alex is going to go through all the non-free data in about 20 minutes anyway. So <laughs> it would behoove them to have as... It would behoove them to give you a lot more AOA for free, like, just the basic level storage, and then to have more reasonable tiers. Because right now, it's not at all competitive with what everyone else is I doing. I wonder if it has to do... Okay, so I'm going to admit something. That I have many people using my iCloud account because because they're sharing the apps right and uh so i have maybe you know four iphones it's like, it's like a quarter a couple of, of petaluma iPads. yeah most of petaluma's on <laughs> yeah i mean that is just no but i mean like... most i have a lot of family members it's a lot of friends because we, we walk on the street and like hey leo there are hey, people in my life who are family right. members but there's enough of them yep. and um maybe that's why maybe they want to keep me from doing that like encourage you to get a new account i didn't notice that it felt like i they really wanted me to create a new account on the iPad. Maybe, but I mean, it just like seems like there's a lot of people that have. If, if you have an iPhone, if you have a 64 gig iPhone and a 64 gig iPad, you know, and you know, it seems it's like easy it, to do. It's, it's easy to run it's out. Easy of, to go over, right? 
I have several iPads. I have a big one. I, you know, my I was, Max. I was being conservative. I've got yeah, a couple of everything. I have my MaxiPad, my MiniPad. I have my iPhone. I have my old iPhone. That's four right there. Yep. And it's not clear. I mean, it'll store the photos for free, but not the videos. And it lets you backup camera roll as well as photo stream. The apps are all free because those can be re-downloaded. But the app data can vary. Like a game has very little in-app data. But a, an app that uses that creates a lot of documents for you will have a lot of it. And it ends up being just so confusing that nobody really knows how much storage they have until they get that annoying warning that Andy was talking about. Part of this is that Apple is not as big a company as we think it is, isn't it? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, uh, we mm. assume that they're that they have unlimited data centers, and they don't. Data centers. They, is, they built mean, that new big one in North Carolina, but now they're building new ones in Oregon and Reno. They need to build more. They don't they have the barge. capacity. I think, they, I think they need to move the data centers to the sea. Oh wait, like Google. And also, mail takes up a lot. Like my most of mine is taken up by mail with attachments in it, so I have to go and either archive the mail or get rid of the emails that have old attachments in it. You, and so, that's a problem on on your iPad. Yeah, because I have my my uh, iCloud account is on my iPad, but my iCloud account email just keeps piling up and uses more and more. Uh, I thought you only get the last thousand images. I mean, last I don't thousand use messages. iCloud email. That's the first thing you'd probably want to stop doing. Why do you I, use I, iCloud email? I forward my personal Gmail. I have a work Gmail account, but I forward my personal Gmail to iCloud because Gmail just never, never worked well for me. Who uses? It always gave me. Well, it doesn't now. If you use Mavericks, forget it. It's dead. Before that, for years, I've had bandwidth exceeded errors. I don't know how uh -huh. you exceed Google's bandwidth, but I got those errors. I got simultaneous connection errors. I got inbox not found errors, and it just got to the point where it wasn't working so much. I forwarded it, and I forgot about it. What a surprise! <laughs> it doesn't work well. I, does any is that on, is does I mean I think probably uh, new users typically will use iCloud because it's just there for their email, but do people do real people really use iCloud? email oh i can't remember the last time i actually got something from an icloud address yeah i mean uh, I, you, yeah, I all and, i get uh, in my icloud inbox is, is apple uh, offers and newsletters and stuff like a that. lot of yeah a lot of people who are either work at apple or work in products associated with apple still use icloud I going back to. to mac or itools days yeah my me.com address yeah <laughs> hmm well, I use it for something, but I don't know what. I think that I think makes you do by accident. An edge case, Renee, is what I'm saying. It might be, but like you know, my, I think my mom has a me account just because she set it up when she. That's got her what first I would iPad expect. And, yeah. Sure, yeah. Oh, just they give me paper. email too. Aren't they nice? Those people. Yeah. Well, it's just sort of there, and if you're part of the of the Apple ecosystem, it does right. real push. Gmail now doesn't do push unless you have the paid account. I mean, it does push, but it doesn't do exchange, which which is my preferred way of using Gmail. I agree. Unless you have the paid account, I um, agree. and the. Mobile me mail just for a lot not mobile me sorry iCloud mail for a lot of people just the contacts mail and calendar sync work really well um, and if you or if you're a new user and you just buy your iPad or your iPhone it gets set up as part of the iCloud system anyway so I think it's I don't even know if they would know that they're using it but they're using it the company Fixu <laughs> not a good name <laughs> Fixu uh, is a mobile app marketing company and they apparently look at um, online uh, devices and stuff like that. They say, according to their numbers, uh, iPad Air adoption numbers, 500% higher than iPad 4 on opening weekend, 400% higher than the Mini on I'm opening not weekend. Big adoption. Well, because the iPad a, a Air, lot of us, uh, myself included, a lot of us skipped um, 4. I mean, so I'm... I skipped 4. I skipped four. I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. I mean, I have to go out and get five now. But okay. but um, I was like, ah, it's not enough. So not enough from three. So um, so right. I, I mean, th a lot of people I'll, I'll remember that was when everyone assumed that Apple would never release two full sized iPads in the same year. So we yeah. a lot of people like myself bought the iPad three for for Retina, and then you know several months later there's the iPad four. So you, everybody that year had either I think already bought the iPad three or they had. Uh, Basically, told themselves that this is uh, 2012 is not a year in which I'm going to be buying a full size iPad. So, and I think that yeah, I think that now that'll be my last my my iPad three. I think is my last 30 pin device, which Aww. is I can't wait. I can't wait. And, you know, I know we complained about it when they first changed it, but do we really? Is there any argument that that is the best device connector made right now? Uh, yeah. But I, w I would uh, say I wish they'd gone with the US micro USB. Micro USB is such a crappy little connection. Well, I, I, it is such a horrible little. It's just universal, so it is. But the problem Speaking is, of which, that can you get little... me a micro USB cable? My my iPhone needs to be charged here, and I, uh, I let it I let it go overnight. <laughs> Your Shenzhen iPhone. Needs to be... <laughs> you could tell looking at it. Could you tell? I wanted to turn it on because it's got iOS seven on it. 
Forty dollars. Does it or does it have iOS seven or Android four point two? It has Android that looks exactly like iOS seven, oh but I gosh. can't show you because I I need a charger cable. I let it die. I also have, by the way, a Lumia. This is a uh, my Nokia Lumia ten twenty running. I wonder if I could turn this one on. Yeah, they all died. I let them. I forgot to charge them. Oh, you power them so off I to save the battery. Well, let's power up. Yeah, see, it's a. It's not HTC. It's HTM. Yeah. Mm. Nice honeycomb logo. <laughs> yeah. And let's. Uh, this is. It's, at least it says Android, but only when you first turn it on. Where do you see this? So this looks like it's gold. The gold ring. The only acceptable color. <laughs> I'm getting the boot menu <laughs> <laughs> in Chinese. <laughs> I don't know. What should I do, Jason? I have no idea. I don't know. I get. I'm getting recovery mode. Oh, crap. A, B, A, B. Oh, oh crap. I think, I think there's a certain level of speaks, you get what you pay for. Who speaks Chinese here? Charbax brought these by from... Are you uh, sure? You, you, what? You see, these 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 phones that run MS-DOS, they cost a little bit less money, but in the end, <laughs> then you're really going to wish that you had a real operating system. Multi oh, now it's making wow. a high-pitched tone. <laughs> Chinese <laughs> person, come here. here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that... We, Leo, that, that, that's not just a random tone. I brought, wait, well, now it's that's, doing that's, a camera. That's the, that's the phone uploading, uploading all the data to your is, network to a oh, server. This is, yeah. just, this is just booting up, right? Yeah, suddenly, see, suddenly see all the screens start changing as it, as it, as it, as it takes over. What, is, what does that say? It says forced Bluetooth pairing. <laughs> to, Tony, Tony speaks Chinese, thank goodness. It doesn't make any sense. Oh... Maybe I'll take it to the Genius Bar. They could figure this out, right? Yeah. yeah. Apple's real good. Yeah, bring me it. Bring me, bring, actually, just bring, if you give me a one that's, I can just plug into the app, the, the Mac. I don't know what the Mac's going to do when it sees it. <laughs> you think it'll boot iTunes? I don't think you want to plug that into a yeah, computer. I, I, don't, yeah, I, don't I wouldn't do that. Oh, come on. <laughs> what could possibly no. go wrong? <laughs> How many Wait executables yeah. are on that? Connected. You know what's funny is they make this look just like a lightning connector, even though I presume it's micro USB, but they make it, you know, lightning. Look like it. Yeah. These are very popular in... Uh, By the way, it's that little... It is. is it lightning? No. No. Is it mini, micro? It's, it's just the I would thing like that to, you hate about USB, uh, yeah. which is that you, you can't a, really you have tell. To, a, you have to decide which direction, and B, if you get that little tongue in the center um, bent, you're done. You're screwed, yeah. And and so the 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 move to a to a completely solid connector no, makes all the difference. No, it is better. I, I agree with you, but it's just not universal. Plus, you had to buy the pins that they can do know. with that thing. The lightning is really like flexible in what they can do with it. Yeah. Oh, it's doing stuff. It's signals. It says my name, Leo, and then yeah, it says, it's saying, "I'm getting all the information off the computer." Name. Yeah. Uploading, <laughs> uploading a whole data it's to it's Shenzhen. Like doing People's some, Army thanks you, Leo. It's, yeah. It's warning. No Residential suitable AP. Services. It's it's like Maryland, this is like portfolio like management. a Linux boot. This is going through some bizarre boots. Thing. No, it's just showing you stuff while it's downloading everything from your computer. It's just keeping it's, you distracted. <laughs> You're like looking at it going, what is it, what doing? Is it doing? And it's going, upload to... Chinese government mm. wants to see... I think I saw this on Blacklist last week. <laughs> <laughs> James Spader's in my phone! Acquired, acquired back door into government servers. Oh, Via wants, twit. It wants $300 in money pack coupons. What? Yes. What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll let this boot up. But uh, yeah, I have the uh, Nokia... Oh, sorry about the reflection there. The Nokia uh, 1011, or what, a 10, 1020? Except it's not, and uh, and also a Galaxy uh, Note three with actual stitched faux and leather. They cost case. like what under a hundred dollars, right? Oh yeah, they're like forty and fifty bucks. Yeah, is real leather? This one's real leather. Check out the S Pen in that. Mm. It has an S Pen. Look, those at marketplaces are really really cool too. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't come out. I, I, I went when the. <laughs> <laughs> it's got it's got a fake S Pen. It doesn't. It's just a. Uh, it's milled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh oh, the Android's doing things I've never seen it done before. <laughs> wow. So yeah, but this is but in China, uh, this is why the iPhone has a hard time selling in China because for forty dollars you can get something that fools your friends uh -huh. <laughs> until they boot it up. <laughs> until they boot it up. <laughs> this looks just like the Galaxy uh, Note paper, but it doesn't do the mush the S hub. Yeah, come on, really? Shub. Shub. Yeah, it looks like a real S hub to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to thank uh, Charbex uh, from. Oh, look how look how much this looks like Windows Phone. This is apparently Android can be skinned 
to look exactly like any operating system. I mean, these tiles even come alive. <laughs> like embedded Unix, uh, like embedded Linux at this point. But apparently I made a mistake. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. And <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could turn it off. And that's, that's also, that's both why Apple's having trouble and why Apple's not having trouble. Right. Well, if you could have, <laughs> it, it means 43 bucks, but if you could right. afford what must be a considerable amount of money mm -hmm. in China for an iPhone, then you don't need to do What this. is the Chinese, how, how do you say in Chinese, how's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Tony back. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we're going to take a break, come back with more. We're talking uh, Macintosh and Apple. Andy Anako, he's got a flight in 45 minutes. So we're going to let you, we're going to get you out of here in 45 minutes, I promise you. Uh, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. Where are you speaking, Andy? And Alex Lindsay. I'm speaking at the Mac Tech Conference in LA. Uh, that, oh, that really cool conference that Neil Tickton does uh, every single year and, and also in regional uh, variations of it. And so, do, you, do you have a can talk you do or what do you, what do you talk about? No, well, every, um, I don't have. Any, that's that's the problem. I don't have any like pre-prepared talk. So anytime I'm invited to like keynote or talk somewhere, I almost always have to write something brand new just for that purpose. So uh, it's going to be on Friday, and it's it's now open to the public. But if you want to buy a conference pass, I'm sure you can still buy a conference pass. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I I if, if you do want to learn about administration or, or development, again, in in terms of conferences that are you both maximize these two things of a learning a hell of a lot and also having a really really great time. I don't think that there's anything that maximizes both of them. Last year, Neil arranged for like a behind-the-scenes tour of Disney Animation. Oh, wow. And we got to see uh, Wreck-It Ralph like a month before it was released. And also, like they actually, everybody stayed stayed uh, stayed behind in the office for like three hours afterward to like basically show us their software and show us their models and show us their their process. So this, this time, this time we're visiting the space shuttle. So, oh, neat. As I said, wow. it's 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 a it's a good time. You learn something, but then after after everything's done, you have a good time at night. Real fun. Our show today brought to you by Audible.com. 150,000 books. Love Audible. I listen to Audible every single day. Uh, I've got it going through my Sonos. I have it on all my phones. The Audible app is great, by the way. If you have not seen that, uh, there's an iPad version. There is a uh, Android Android version. There's an iPhone version. Um, and it, it keeps up with where you are. So if you listen... At home, and then you start listening on your iPad. All of a sudden, uh, it'll say, "Hey, you were you left off? Here's where you left off." I love Audible, and I want you to try it. Now, that's why we've arranged for a free book for you. Visit Audible.com, browse around, take a look at all the new uh, classic books, new books, history, science fiction. Um, I saw Ender's Game, the movie, and I've counseled you all: please read the book first. And my counsel has not changed. While the movie was very good, I think I liked it better because I was such a fan of the book. I don't know how people who didn't read the book felt about it. I, I think of it as literary zen. You know, because you're just like, you know, a lot of times when I would normally be impatient, I'm just like, eh, I'm in a traffic jam. I'll yeah. just listen to a book. I'm listening. I'm enjoying. Yep. Sometimes I'll drive around the block or I'll park in the driveway and keep listening. <laughs> I listen when I'm on the treadmill or the rowing machine. I got the headphones in and it makes time go by really quickly. Uh, here's, how, here's the deal. If you go to audible.com slash MacBreak, we're going to get you your first book absolutely free. You'll sign up for the gold account. That's the book a month account. You also get the daily audio edition of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, your choice. Uh, very affordable way. In fact, I recommend the subscriptions. You can buy uh, a la carte, but it's a very affordable way. And since your first one's free, why not? Audible.com slash MacBreak. Andy, what are, you, uh, what are you listening to these days? See there? Ooh, Speaker for the Dead. So they have, it looks like they have the whole... Ender's Game series. So if you did like the book, uh, you might want to go to its sequel, Speaker for the Dead, which is quite interesting. Xenocide, Children of the Mind, First Meetings in the End of Verse. Wow, there's more than I thought. Ender in Exile. Um, chance to go through the whole oeuvre. What are you listening okay. to on the on the flight today? Uh, actually... I bought something especially for it. It's kind of an oddball thing. It's a like a 90 minute like sort of essay on creativity by David Lynch called Catching the Big Fish, Meditation, uh, Consciousness, and Creativity. Uh, mm. And first of all, what really got me was just the fact that it's David Lynch talking for 90 minutes about his process. And that's a little bit like listening to Hunter S. Thompson talk about drug use. 
<laughs> Even if you know that you're not capable of those such things yourselves, it's going to be an entertaining insight into why he does the things that he does. Uh, and, I, and I absolutely love David Lynch. Uh, but, but also, like before I bought it, I pulled up like some. Uh, it's it's kind of a famous talk he gave, or p- a piece that he wrote. And here's here's one quote from it. He says, "This is David Lynch talking, saying, I hate slick and pretty.'" Pretty things. I prefer mistakes and accidents, which is why I like things like cuts and bruises. They're like little flowers. I've always said that if you have a name for something like cut or bruise, people will automatically be disturbed by it. But when you see the same thing in nature and you don't know what it is, it can be very beautiful. So that's what that's what I'm going to be looking forward to uh, during my flight today. So you're saying uh, this is more uh, uh, of David Lynch, early early period David Lynch than Mulholland Drive David Lynch. It looks that way, right? If uh, it's and of course it's not a story; it's just more like right. he's a, he's a big a promoter of transcendental meditation. He's got a TM center. He's uh, gotten yeah. a lot of a lot of Hollywood uh, people into transcendental meditation. So, and I I gather this is something about that. I'm going to add that to my. Be, it uh, I it wish looks like fun. Yeah, so you can get that for free. You can get a variety, Ender's Game or its sequels for free. You can get Spinal Breathing Pranayama for free. It's it's all. <laughs> It's all there if you want it. They also have the great courses, which I, they just added this recently. I really love. These are uh, the best college teachers in the country. Uh, they, look, there's a book on, a uh, course on meditation, but also on communication. This is my favorite. Robert Greenberg's How to Listen to and Understand Great Music. I loved this. Get that for free. Money and banking, what everyone should know. Einstein's relativity and the quantum revolution. Modern physics for non-scientists. 12 hours, 20 minutes. That's probably uh, 12 lectures. Really great stuff. And, and you're, I mean, you're pouring stuff into your mind that is going to be, you know, as just fabulous. The art of critical decision-making, transformational leadership. The Vikings. How would you like to spend 17 hours learning about the Vikings from one of the top professors of Vikingology? I would. The Spartans. Spartans! I think I, I think I listened to that book like four times. The Rise and Fall of China. <laughs> Great stuff. Audible.com slash MacBreak. Try it free today. Uh, we thank them for their support of MacBreak Weekly. Lots of problems with the... Uh, with Well, let's talk about Mavericks first, then MacBook Pro with Retina. Um, what are all the issues? Ma- Apple apparently testing an a- update to Apple Mail for the uh, Gmail issues. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten any Gmail in mail since uh, I upgraded. Ooh. I thought it was just, you know, uh, people who'd done some workarounds, you know, according to tidbits, but it's more than that. Do we know what's wrong? Uh, Gmail has always had, Most, like, it's never been an IMAP app, uh, an IMAP-based service. Real it's IMAP. Something beyond email. Yeah, yeah. so they've, they've kind of begrudgingly provided IMAP, but it's quirky, eccentric IMAP. Um, so it's never been great. And if you just used it, if you just input your credentials and used it, it'll keep working the same way it's always worked. But if you did those fancy workarounds, like a lot of people hid their all mail uh, folder because it took up a lot of space on their hard drive. So they got rid of it. And now with Mavericks mail, um, that no longer plays nicely. So you have to restore the all mail folder. Uh, and apparently Apple's aware of all this and they're going to rush out a fix uh, as fast as they can. Yeah, they're they're apparently testing it. Oh, dear. What's now what's going on? I've got. This is in color now. <laughs> I, color. I wish I could tell no. what's what I'm doing here. Oh, let's just go ahead and push the button. Oh. Feels like the Android. Try, rec- try scanning your fingerprint, Leo. <laughs> that does not. Oh, something happened. That does not work. I Maybe I just picked the right one. Let's see. Don't touch anything. Either that or it's going to brick. <laughs> 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 Uh, is it is it Google's fault? Is it Apple's fault? Go- it's Gmail is non-standard. That certainly sounds like Google's fault. I mean, it's a regression. If you're a Gmail user who used to use Gmail and Mail.app, then it's a regression for you. It, doesn't, right. it no longer works as well as it did. Uh, Apple will probably bring it up to parity, but it's never going to, because it's not standard IMAP, it will never be a great experience in Mail.app. So a lot of people use AirMail or MailPlane or right. just put it in, use it in Chrome where it belongs. Um, it, it, it's suboptimal, but it'll be better. Right. Here it is. Here's iOS uh, 7 now on my... Uh, look, it even does the fingerprint reading. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is, this it has Android. a nice little decora- decoration there. Isn't that funny? This is Android. Still got the YouTube app. They've even duplicated the... This is the clock app, and it looks just like the Apple clock. How's their maps? 
Let's see what. <laughs> I wonder where. <laughs> wonder where they get maps from. It is. It does say I two eighty. Uh, yeah. Well, let's skip that. Uh, updated the latest. Oh, it's Google Maps. That's Google Maps, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Google Maps. But you know, you probably wouldn't know or care. Let's see what the App Store takes us to. That's the Apple App Store, isn't it? What? This is bizarre. It must be a fake App Store. It looks just like it. Go ahead and put your credit card in there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't so, have to pay for things in that App Store. Uh, weather? Is this going to be the new weather? No, that's the old weather. But that's pretty good. In Beijing. In Beijing. So this is actually, it is obviously, as you saw, Android. Oh, Passbook. Let me put my credit card numbers in here. There you go. That'll, that'll work. Um, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I don't think even people think that they're getting a real iPhone. I think that they just want enough of the right. iPhone experience that they can enjoy it. Right. I, I don't that's think what's, that's what's being delivered here. Right. I and mean, it's gold. It, it's gold. It's got, it's got a phony iOS seven. I just took a picture. Let me take a good picture. Let's take a picture of Alex. That's not going to be a good picture no matter how you do it. <laughs> it made it a little cool, I think, but let's see. I mean, this is pretty functional for $43. <laughs> Does it pinch? Yeah. Look. You can even zoom. Multi-touch. Wow. One to seven finger tracking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, the, so the mail is one issue. Were there other issues in Mavericks? You mentioned one, Renee, just before the show. You said occasionally when you play a YouTube video, sound goes out. Yeah, it's not just YouTube. I mean, it, uh, that's one of the things that can cause it. If you play a Flash video or anything that plays audio seemingly through a video player that is based on Flash, like YouTube, uh, Core Audio can cut out. Core Audio is the service that runs all audio on OS X, and you either have to go into Activity uh, Monitor and kill the Core Audio process, and it's listed there alphabetically, or you have to reboot for it to come back. Um, Core Audio has always been a little problematic, a little flaky in some areas, but this is the first time it's doing that. Uh, and hopefully that'll get fixed. And you could too. restart that in the activity monitor and it would it will yep. get better. Yep. Uh, also complaints about the uh, new iCloud keychain, which is a neat idea, but uh, John Brodkin running at Ars Technica uh, suggests not uh, abandoning LastPass or 1Password. It is, <laughs> it is not a replacement uh, for those. Uh, I have to say, I, I was puzzled by the the setup, which said, oh, you could just authenticate with your four-digit code and then still sent me a text message. And said I needed that. Um, he says basically it's it's fairly uh, limited. Um, limits the length of passwords to twelve letters, numbers, and three dashes every time. That's the password generator. That's mm -hmm. that's even not as good as the old keychain password generator, which was much more mm -hmm. flexible. That's odd. Well, and I think that for someone who's not. It's it's a great it's it's great to add something like this for someone who's not using LastPass or. Um, you know, or one password. Better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It gives you a little bit more control and so on and so forth. If you're already using one of those services, there's a lot of power in both of those services. Um, and I, I think that it would be very hard for people who are already using it to give it up. So you do have this autofill. If you want to turn it on, you can go to preferences, passwords, click the box that says autofill usernames and passwords. You can also allow autofill for even for websites that request passwords not be saved. Typically a bank. That seems like a bad idea. I would not yeah. turn that on, although it is convenient. Also public, yeah, public terminals right. do that too. Uh, the, yeah, right. If, if you're a bad guy, that's the first thing you do is you turn that on in a public terminal. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, uh, it does say enabling this override requires the Mac be configured to lock the screen with idle. That's good. But it still fails to autofill passwords on some websites, most notably Apple's own iCloud.com. Oops. I mean, uh, they all have some trouble in some websites. I mean, I mean we they have, all do. Yeah. Yeah. For mysterious reasons sometimes. I mean, this is like time machine for security. It's intended, it's not intended for anyone already using right. one password or last pass or anything. It's intended for people who, like Touch ID, never had any form of security. And at worst, it provides right. education that this stuff exists. Anyway, really nice. Anything to get them to use like stronger password system. It's better than nothing. I guess that's the best you can say about it. Um, and now let's talk about the MacBook uh, Pro with Retina. There were people reporting, we talked last week about the ghosting issues, and then people reporting keyboard and trackpad issues on the 13 inch. Apparently, according to CNET, Apple is working on a fix for those input issues. Um, I, would, I would just like to go back to 
what, what we've talked about. Just don't before. do it. Just just wait. You know, it's a big upgrade. All Let's, those fixes will come. Yeah. <laughs> Both with the operating system and the hardware. <laughs> eh, give it a yeah. version. Uh, in a knowledge base page uh, last week, the company said Apple is aware of rare circumstances where the built-in keyboard and multi-touch trackpad may become unresponsive on a 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina late 2013 and is working on an update to resolve this behavior. Meanwhile, they say the workaround is put the computer to sleep for about a minute. Give it a nap. <laughs> And it's just it, tired. See if it's cranky after yeah, the that. Retina, it Seriously. makes it very tired. Let it sleep for a minute and then rewake it and see if it feels it's better. It's very tired. Tired. Listen, the computer tired. has not. You haven't let it go to sleep for four days. But that that's good news because it means it's software, not hardware, and it'll be fixable, right? Right. Uh, well, it's software that's trying to fix for the hardware. We don't know what, what the issue. Yeah, the, the it, we don't know what the issue yeah. is. I mean, I think yeah. that again, I think that there's a uh, with any of any time there's a brand new. Hardware. And it's hard for me because I'm, I really want the Mac Pros, but I also really want to <laughs> get the second version. Yeah. Once they've been gamma tested. I actually love my, my MacBook Pro with Retina. This is last year's that I'm using here, and then I have the oh, new I have at a, home. I have a lot of MacBook Pros. I love them. I, 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 they, they're, they're great machines. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, oh, oh, if you have an iPhone 5S with battery issues. Uh, Apple's acknowledged that and is replacing those uh, as well. This is, these, that, that is not unusual for, you know, when you're making a new phone, there are issues. Customers with affected units will be contacted to receive a replacement device. Um, Apple's PR department says the issue can cause shortened battery life, longer charge times, or a battery lead that will no longer charge. Uh, so they'll, they apparently know uh, which serial numbers are affected. Right. They it's know bad, what it's happened. A it's a bad batch. Yeah. Uh, and they'll call you. If you haven't yet gotten a call, call, call Apple Care, And uh, uh, they will, they'll give, you know, you give them the serial number and they'll check. And, and, it, and it doesn't sound like this is a lot of phones that have this problem. Right. No, it's a tiny amount. Yeah. It's like someone, you know, took a, took a bio break. You know, right. for like 15 minutes. 15 the minutes. Went by. And, and they they forgot to put the They put the ion in, but they forgot to put the lithium in. It's, it happens all the time. It's like the, the dude who was sealing the battery yeah. or whatever. He, uh, he, he was like, oh. Uh, that's really. And then Foxconn, you know, it was like, and, it was, and a thousand of them went by. All iPhones made on Mondays. Yeah, well, no, no, it was probably like a thousand of them went by in that 15 minutes. Right. And, and, and then he came back right. and he's like, I thought we were breaking. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't think anyone's going to notice. Um. Launch of iPad in early 2010 coincides with a quantum leap in visits to Apple stores. I guess you could expect the same thing in 2013. This is, again, Horace Dediu, the amazing analyst. It is a Simcoe blog. You, you, can, you can actually track the releases of products by the spikes in visitors to the store. You see those, see those poles there? That's when new iPads came out. Personal setup was brilliant. Yeah. Average visitors per store per quarter. Big spiky thing there. Except for seasonal peaks, the visitors per store per quarter are fairly steady. So what caused the quantum jump in traffic? Was it due to a redesign of the stores? Was it a change in the product mix? Was it due to a change in staffing rules? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled that he's spending so much time on those things. You know, just new iPads. That, that'll do it. Ron Johnson uh, said at the time former head of Apple Retail, it was as if the stores were designed for an iPad. It's, <laughs> it's something that needs to be discovered with a retail experience. I think with a new one, you're going to see the same thing because people are going to want to go in and feel it and touch it and perhaps want to compare it to the Mini with Retina. Do we know a day for the Mini with Retina yet? We, we know it's this month, supposedly, right? Late November. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After Thanksgiving, heard too. Black Friday, right? That's that. That sounds like Black. That would be the right day, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I heard Black Friday, but only just. <laughs> well, what <laughs> is uh, the only, only thing I heard? Let me look at the calendar here. So, Thanksgiving I mean, is uh, the Black Friday is the uh, is the 29th. That gives you the most possible weekdays to work on finishing it. It means basically yeah. it's that or the day after. Well, if you did a big, if you did it on Black Friday, it means that all the press that was normally go to <laughs> Black Friday goes to, go to Apple. Apple lines. That's true. Just saying. Not that I'm a conspiracy theorist. You know, Furby. It's like the Furby. It's like the e pro. The e, it's going to mm. be an iPad Christmas. Didn't Tim Cook mm. say that? Mm. Maybe he has a strategy. 
but also they know that they know that they're going to have a run on these devices that right. on day one of launch, even if the day one was in October. So right. you may as well sort of if, if you could schedule two hurricanes for the same day in the same city, you right. may as well have it in the same day. <laughs> So does that, that means I have to get in line on Black Friday, the, the least, the time I normally will stay far away from the mall. Wouldn't that be awesome? But you can get five bucks off a hard drive, Leo. It's win-win. <sighs> I was hoping a lot. Yeah. <sighs> uh, good news, iPad Air online orders have gone, what, what is this? Is this story from November 1st? Oh, this is, this is an old story. I don't know launch. how this gotten, this is the launch story. We know about that. That was, that was Friday. It was five days ago. <laughs> An eternity. <laughs> An eternity in technology time. Ashton Kutcher, now lead product engineer for <laughs> Lenovo. Because <laughs> Lenovo did so well at BlackBerry. That should really fix things up. Did you see that? BlackBerry, uh, they've decided... What did they decide? Tell us, Canadian. What did BlackBerry uh, they, decide? They decided not to be sold off. They got a billion-dollar loan. They got rid of Torsten Hines as their CEO. and they brought Wait a minute. That's the Chen. new CEO. Ooh. The new CEO, so he's the old new CEO. The new new CEO is John Chen, who ran Sybase and sold it to SAP. The guy, his last job as CEO was running a software company. Uh, yeah, an analytic database company. And then they sold it to SAP, and now he's... It's, they might be doing an enterprise play, Leo. Who gave BlackBerry a billion dollars? Yeah, who, who would do the that? Same Fairfax, the same people who were going to buy it. They couldn't get enough money to buy, so I believe they just did an investment. Why? Why would you? Why? Why would you do that? Is there any chance in hell BlackBerry can survive? Sure. I mean, it, but IBM is a huge company doing enterprise services that no, it has no sexy consumer face, but they still do really good business. So as I mean, long as you have technology, and is it the success of BlackBerry Messenger on Android and iPhone that has given people this buoyant? Feeling about the future of BlackBerry? Is that what it is? But is it is, is and is the messenger as secure as the no, as a BlackBerry? Not it's not secure. at all. It's, it's the same. So it's you know having it there. I mean, I think that the the reason people use it is for security, and and I think that that they use it because their high school buddies use it, right? Or originally you used it because you were on Wall Street, and then you had friends or and family or people, mm -hmm. yeah, Wall Street or government. But but also it has a lot of the same features that Microsoft Office has and Windows has. It's not just the features of the software itself. It's also the fact that if you need to hire up some people that can support your uh, your, your mobile infrastructure, you can find people who know how to who know how to make BlackBerry Messenger and, and BlackBerry servers uh, server software work. And they're so a lot less expensive. You, now. Don't, you don't have to retrain. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I think that I, I, I have no I have no idea. If the company is worth a billion dollars, but it certainly has a certain amount of value. Um, I wrote a column uh, for the Sun Times last week that was uh, that was talking <laughs> about that sort of stuff, and I wondered that if they decided to simply say, you know, we got clobbered by this whole concept of bringing our own device. What if we decided to really embrace that, and we will we will release our own uh, Android-based launcher? that will essentially turn any Android 4.1 phone into a BlackBerry. And we'll also have access to the entire Android app library. So we can have this really cool enterprise Dudley phone that will also do Facebook, that will also do Fruit Ninja. Uh, but we can now take all the, the hair pulling stuff of manufacturing hardware and let other people you know, fight for scraps. We will just do the, we will just push electrons for the rest of our lives. They should have hired you for CEO. Way to yeah. Yeah, they're pointing Damn out in the chat room rightly that the Canadian sure government awesome. blocked uh, Lenovo from bidding. They didn't want Lenovo to own it. Uh, and I don't know if that's because they're Chinese or because of Ashton Kutcher, but it could really go either way. Ashton Kutcher could have been the CEO. <laughs> of the, could, Leno, maybe that's why well, Lenovo. Know, Ashton, Ashton. Also, they, they have they have Alicia Keys. BlackBerry has Alicia Keys. They have Neil Gaiman working for them. Uh, that's pretty good. If, 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 all, if all that happens is you get to meet Alicia Keys and Neil Gaiman, that's got to be worth <laughs> with at least $80 million right there. What is Neil yeah. doing? What is Neil himself doing? Oh, he was the, for uh, the launch of BlackBerry 10, he did a creative project where he basically had people tweet, like, what is what is your best memory of November? And then he would write, he wrote 12 short stories wow. based on the months of the year and then solicited people to do art based on it. And it was, it, it, you can now, you can go to the BlackBerry site somewhere and download it as a big PDF. And it's, it's really quite brilliant. Yeah, they have their new Z30 phablet on the market now. So I think it tied in with that launch. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know they had a that, that was BlackBerry 10. The Z10, I think. Z10. They have Z10, Z30. So the numbers keep going up, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> again, again they, they, have, they have so many hit products out there, they just kind of blur together in my That's mind. That's it. This is the 5th of November. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Is that because, what, Guy Fawkes burnt down or tried to blow up the Parliament building but failed? 
Uh, Patrick Rothfuss uh, had a contest last month. Did you know that? I did not know. He had a Twitter contest. He asked people <clears throat> to pose as Patrick Rothfuss on Twitter and then had the fans vote on Patrick Rothfuss, the author of one of our favorite uh, uh, books, um, The Name of the Wind. Uh, and uh, he so then he had people vote on who was the real Patrick Rothfuss, and he lost. Uh, he... <laughs> The winner was uh, a another science fiction writer, Mary Robinette Cowell, the author of Shades of Milk and Honey. She posed as Patrick underscore Rothfuss. Uh, there was not Patrick Rothfuss. There was fake Patrick Rothfuss. Our own Veronica Belmont was the real Pat Rothfuss. She got 9% of the vote. Um, Patrick Rothfuss' own assistant, Amanda, got 14% of the vote. Patrick Rothfuss himself, the actual Patrick Rothfuss, Fifteen percent of the voters said that's him. <laughs> Some of those look like there's a lot of Jim Dalrymples in those photos. Patrick Rothfuss happens to look just like Jim Dalrymple. That's why. Isn't that funny? That, then this was all for charity, but I, I think a great idea. Great, but isn't it funny that the the that uh, the science fiction author got forty two? It was not Patrick Rothfuss. The woman Mary got forty two percent of the votes. They wanted her to be married. Best Buy says, hey, we were all worried about, you know what showrooming is? That's where you go to a Best Buy or somewhere else to figure out what washing machine to guy buy, and then you order it on Amazon. Yep. And everybody was very worried that people would do this. Best Buy says, you know what? It's not a problem. And guess what? They figured out, hey, we at least have people in the store. Maybe there's some way to convert them into customers. <laughs> it's crazy. What a thought. Maybe we'll have people who actually know what they're talking about. What a thought. Have service. No, and, and you know what happens when I walk into a store like that and I get great service? Uh, number one is it's a lot. It is easier some of the time to just go in when I'm trying to figure something out and just talk to them. And I do feel somewhat um, obliged to buy from them at that point. You know, I, exactly. I, I, I feel, it's you called know, obligation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A, it's it's tr traditional sales technique. If you go to Cairo, they pull you in and they give you a cup of tea. Right. And they say, have a nice cup. No, 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 no! I'm not going to sell you a carpet. Just relax, sit right. down, have a cup of tea. Would you like something to eat? And by the time you're done, you got to buy a carpet. Yep. We got a when we were in Venice, we got a free trip to Murano to see the glass factories. They had the glass blower come out, give a whole <laughs> demonstration. Then they took you on a tour of the factory in the showroom. By the time you're done, four thousand dollars in glassware later, it works. That's how they do uh, timeshare in St. Martin. Same thing. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get one. But you cannot buy a timeshare on Amazon yet. Uh, yet. I just. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> uh, the new CEO at uh, Best Buy was actually very smart. Uh, uh, Mike Mikan uh, said he 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 said I'm going to make showrooming a success for us. Very smart. Price matching, customer service improvements. Their profit has increased. Shares have soared. Well, and, and one of the things I think that that a lot of them could do is, for instance, building an app that allows you to get a lot more information you know scan a scan a qr code and get more information um you know and, and have and target is putting free wi-fi in their stores just for that reason right because they realize they used to be in fact you still see stores no you can't bring your camera phone and take pictures in here right because they're so afraid target said no come on in well and and we you know that was one of the things that uh when iBooks first came out, we got approached by a very big box company and said, like, what would you do with iBooks with, you know, with our showrooms and everything else? And we were like, well, we would, uh, um, you know, the, uh, you know, get something out there so people can get more information about all of the goods. You go into a, you, you watch all these TVs and uh, I don't know which, I don't know why, if, if I don't know about TVs, if I'm not Robert Herron or I can't email Robert Herron, right. <laughs> like, you need to go online. You know, I need to find out, like, what 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 should I be looking for? What is why is 1080p important? Right. Why is 240 hertz important? Why is you know why are all these things important? And and you want to have all that information, and you want to do that with whether it's TVs or faucets or or fishing lines or you know whatever it is, you want to be able to get all that information, and that's going to make you much more likely to be there because now you're touching it and getting the information right. you had. And if you then move to purchase, so say, hey, by the way, do you want that right now? And and I can and they can mail it to you. Half the reason I don't buy stuff, I don't want to take it home. I don't want to put it in the car. Oh, and usually I'm somewhere else. Like I'm yeah. I'm in New York, and I I look yeah. at something. This send is it, great. And I'm, I, I'm just that's what order they did in the uh, glass factory. Right. We'll ship it. Yep. Um. Well, and also now Amazon is no longer has its uh, or is starting to lose its uh, advantage with sales tax. It's starting to collect sales tax in many states. Yeah, I, Soon, you we'll know what has not tax. really been that big of a. The shipping hey, costs are big. That's eight or nine percent. Well, shipping, yeah, free shipping because I'm a Prime member. 
I still buy a lot of stuff. In there, I don't, so. but I, I guess here's the thing is I like that I don't, you know, I, I like that it's not calculated or whatever, but I paying taxes on it is not the reason that I buy from Amazon. People still look at the price point and that, but that's why this is good for consumers because it makes everybody more competitive. Yep. You assume an, an intelligent consumer, now you've got a match. In fact, that's uh, what Walmart did. They, and it wasn't a big deal, but they dropped 20 bucks off the price of the iPad Air, 479. And what is the response? Apple, Best Buy, Staples, and Target all said, all right, we'll match. Right. It's good for us, right? We all benefit from that. Um, so I'm glad to see it. I, it. Competition is good for consumers. And and apparently, if you, <laughs> what a concept. You have a beautiful store <laughs> with knowledgeable salespeople and products people want. They actually buy it there. Well, well and, 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 and that's really the future of brick and mortar is you, you have to, you have service. to have great service. You service. have to have something unique as well. Yeah. I mean, we were, I, I, I don't know if I, I mean, I talked this a long time ago, but we were, uh, I was at a coffee shop in Pittsburgh that, uh, the Beehive that, is cat a corner to a Starbucks. So the Beehive had been there for a long time, right. and a Starbucks opened right across yeah. the street. And I asked him how that affected business. He goes, oh, we've expanded t two times. What? You know, really? And he goes, people go to the Starbucks, and then they see this crazy, artsy right. um, coffee shop, and an they walk over, yeah. and they never go back to Starbucks. It's and he an goes, you know, and, but, but he provides a very unique experience, yeah. you know, high-quality coffee, and, yeah. and, you know, and, and, it, and, and just a fun place to be. And people are always going to choose that, but you can't. What you can't do is have a mediocre coffee shop and expect Starbucks to move in next to you and and survive. You know. Right. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on. Get our picks of the week in a second. Then let Andy uh, run to his plane. Our show today brought to you by our friends at 99designs.com. I just saw a tweet from somebody who said, "I started my first design contest at 99designs.com. I'm so excited to see what I get. A, qu a quarter of a million designers." are waiting for you at 99designs.com. Uh, look, everybody uh, who's listening, I'm sure, has an idea for an app. Maybe you work somewhere where you have uh, brochures or menus. And a lot of times the temptation is just, hey, design it yourself. Except, as I have learned, maybe we're not as good at it as we ought to be. That's why you really want to get a real designer. And 99designs is a great place to go. If you need fresh marketing collateral, they are all kinds of marketing design and everything from vehicle wraps. I want to do a twit vehicle wrap. I'm really, I'm, we're looking at it. As soon as we get our car, car fixed. So, so we, I'm talking with Lisa about marketing, right? And she says, billboard it's on 101, you know, in Silicon Valley. I said, what if instead of a billboard for the same price, we wrapped 20 cars in Silicon Valley driving around? I love that. You know what's idea. most important is the sticker. See the sticker right here? You know how many people I meet with this sticker? Yeah. I was in, I was in, I was in. You got a Twit sticker on there. Yeah, I was in uh, Vietnam and the guy goes, so, uh, so how do you know Twit? You know, and, and, and then I'm in. You know, we got that design. Uh, in, a, in a way, we did the same thing. 99 Designs wasn't around yet. This was many years ago. I asked our viewers, give mm -hmm. us designs. Dorothy Yamamoto, who was a, a, a designer who was getting back into the business after having kids, um, sent me the design. I said, tilt it a little bit. This, and we had, I think we've got several hundred great designs. And uh, and it was a, was it a great experience. I didn't give her the $499 I would if it were 99designs.com. <laughs> but uh, she was very kind to give us all yeah. rights. And uh, it's a great logo. So this is how it works. You say, this is what I need. I need an email template or a banner ad or a vehicle wrap. Um, all of that, by the way, landing page is just $299. That's the starting price. Uh, you'll set up what they call a contest. Designers will uh, look at your contest and decide whether they want to submit or not. They submit. And uh, you look at all the choices. Some beautiful stuff, too. These people are really good. You get a design you love or your money back. You even decide how much you want to spend. And you get a lot of concepts, not just proposals, but actual ideas. Which you, and you can work with a designer and then pick your designer and you will get a polished design in just seven days. 99designs.com. Right now, if you go to 99designs.com slash MBW, I was going to pronounce MBW. It's a great deal for designers, Mbw. too, in a way to kind of fill your space. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a little time, you should go there and, and become one of the designers there. It's really fabulous. If you go there right now, you get a $99 power pack upgrade absolutely free. That, uh, that is gives your listing a little bit more punch. They'll bold, highlight, and feature your design project in the 99 Designs Marketplace. That way you get about twice as many designs. So visit 99designs.com slash MBW and get a design you love guaranteed at 99designs. Offer ends at four weeks, one day, 23 hours, 57 minutes, and eight seconds. That's what it says right there. 99designs.com slash MBW. MVW. We uh, we've we've had some great designs from 99 designs. They're really nice people too. 
Let us, uh, time for our picks of the week. I'm going to get Andy's first just in case uh, they call your name. <laughs> I've been prepacking. Uh, this is now, there's there's been a lot of really cool new styluses for the iPad that use Bluetooth uh, low energy to because you know the iPad doesn't have a pressure sensitive screen, uh, and also you always have a basically you always you always have a limitation of it's looking for something about the size of your fingertip to, uh, to as a sensor sort of thing so that limits like the utility of what you can do with it. Uh, but we're seeing some Bluetooth ones that have some really clever solutions to solve those problems. Uh, this is from Adonit, and this is called the Jot Script. And it has a really cool feature in that it is exactly like a ballpoint pen. So if you are someone who takes handwritten notes with your iPad, uh, there is nothing that, at least in my hand, feels as much as uh, like a regular natural writing instrument than this. It is Bluetooth. It runs off of one AAA battery. It will run with pretty much any app that's out there. Uh, Adonit came out with a uh, software development toolkit so that if, you, if you're a developer and you support the SDK for this device, it will be the tracking becomes, uh, moves from very, very good to almost the as precise as the width of this tip. Uh, and that's how good it, that's how good it becomes. There's already a bunch of really great apps available for it. This one, as a matter of fact, has you can see the uh, the uh, Evernote logo on it because it is actually because Penultimate is actually set up uh, to run, which is an, an Evernote owned app, is set up to run with this specifically. So again, if you're someone who use doesn't use it necessarily for art, but for actually writing down notes and diagrams that someone speaks or as you're thinking, this is great. The only feature it doesn't have compared to some of the other Bluetooth uh, styluses is that this is not pressure sensitive and Adonit does make, make a different version of this that has, has like a very a different sort of form factor that is pressure sensitive so if you're using uh, if you're using your stylus for artwork maybe you don't want to get this one but again for, if you're the person in the conference room who wants to be able to take notes on an iPad uh, this will do it for you uh, one thing I forgot to mention too is that if the developers is supporting the toolkit that uh, Adonit creates for this it also you works with a palm rejection as well. So you can actually have your palm resting on the surface of the iPad while you're writing, and it won't like confuse where the tip of the thing is. Um, this is not cheap. It's about 75 bucks, but it's a nice, it, it has a good weight to it. It's made out of uh, a, a nice aluminum to it. It feels like a very high quality product. I wish that it had sort of a clip on it so that you could easily pocket it. I wish it had a little bit of grip added grippiness here at the business end of it. It doesn't have that. Uh, but other than that, this is the only scout stylus I've ever seen that would actually make me want to use my iPad as a handwritten notes taking device. Uh, the other ones make it sort of possible. This one makes it actually desirable. Neat. A D O N I T Adonit or ad, yeah, Adonit.net if you want to take a look at it. And the particular one that Andy's talking is the Jot Script Evernote Edition 7499. I like that. I, I don't need the pressure sensitive if I'm just writing. I don't. In fact, that, that would be a negative. I just want to write. Andy will let you go. He's gone. <laughs> He's got to go to a flight. Mr. Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. What's your pick this week? I'll first, I'll echo Andy's pick. I love both the Adonit Jot series and the Pogo styluses for different reasons. The Adonit ones are just like when I was in drafting classes in school. Fantastic feel. And the Jots are really nice. Sorry, and the, the um, Pogos are really nice for brushwork. Both fantastic styluses. My pick, though, should come as no surprise to anybody. I don't use a lot of apps daily, but I do use this one. It's Fantastical 2. It's the oh, yeah. new version of Fantastical. Um, it has been completely rewritten for iOS 7. It now integrates with reminders as well as calendars because there's an open API for reminders. It's still Michael Simmons and um, I'm always going to mess up Kent's last name. Kent Sutherland, designed by uh, Wolfgang Bettlemy, fantastic designer. Icon by the Icon Factory, David Lanham, of course. You know, great looking stuff, great working stuff. The scrolling is fantastic. Um, I hate calendars. I don't like using calendars. I hate the idea of managing my information, taking more time than actually doing the stuff that it's managing. Uh, and I don't use the iOS calendar because it never, it struck me as an app that Steve Jobs never used because he would have thrown it at somebody's head <laughs> after two minutes. But Fantastical is great. It's so fast to get stuff into it. it. uses natural language the way Siri does, but through typing instead of through speech. So you just type a sentence, exactly what they're showing in the video, lunch with Elon, and it just goes right in there. But also when you're out and about and you're trying to find something, they've got a bi-directional scroller. You can scroll through the day ticker on the top uh, and the list on the bottom, and it's just so fast to find something. Um, using Fantastical. And because it's using the universal reminders and calendar database, 
uh, if you're using iCloud, you know, if you're one of those people who just happen to set up iCloud for calendars, it'll sync everything. And that includes, you know, to Fantastical on the Mac, but to the default calendar apps as well, if you have to use them somewhere, uh, or if you're using an iPad that doesn't happen to have Fantastical, Fantastical on it yet. So it's really quick, really beautifully designed. The iOS 7 version looks really clean. Um, the reminders integration is fantastic. Um, he had me at hello with, with this app. I was really happy about it. Is there it. an iPad version, or it looks like there's only an iPhone version for it? There's an iPhone and Mac version. It's really interesting when you talk to a lot of developers. The iPhone is this device that you use quickly while you're on the go to get things in and get things out. And the Mac is this device that when you're sitting down, it's just so quick and powerful to enter a lot of stuff that the iPad sort of sits in between. And yes, it's good right. for reporting or aggregation, but it almost ends up being a third priority for productivity apps just because the iPhone and the and the Mac are so such clear such clearly different things. You can run the iPhone version on the iPad, of course, but because it syncs, you can also run any other calendar app you want there, and it, it works just fine. You know, it, it's funny that you should do this because uh, I got two calls this weekend on the radio show from people who upgraded iOS 7 and hated the calendar app so much. Yeah. They said, save me. I want to roll back. Is there anything better? And it, it, I said, fantastic, Cal. Um, so, and I think it would be really nice to have an iPad version because, yes, for data entry, you use the phone or the desktop, and I use the uh, I, Fantastic Cal has a menu bar uh, and yep. thing that makes it very easy to enter on the Mac. But I also want a big display on my iPad. I mean, that, there, there's a place in the iPad for a calendar display, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's usable, and, and with all that real estate, you could really have a nice calendar display. So I think that there is a reason to make an iPad uh, I, version. I will keep bugging him about it. I, you know, I've, I've, I've been on the beta for Fantastic Cal for a long time, so I've been using the new version for a while. It's held up really well. It's got a new... Uh, you can you can rotate it to landscape to get the week view now, which is new, and it's just a lot of great new features, really really well put together. Yeah, fantastic. And we'll bug them for an iPad version two yeah. for the iPhone, and there's still fantastic Cal one for the desktop uh, in the app. Store. Yeah, and fantastic Cal two is a new app, which does bug some people, but it's you know it's yeah, months and months of work on their part, and I'll throw them you know three dollars. Yeah, without even you thinking know what? These it. things are so cheap. I see no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving along to your pick of the week, Mr. Uh, Alex. Lynch. I'm streaming live. Why are you doing that? It's for fun. See, you're, you're on, on YouTube. YouTube live right now. Right here. So if you go to, if you go to, yeah. <laughs> I want to be on your show. Right, there we go. We, you're I on my show. show. Can here. I be on your show? Yeah. So here it is. Let's see if I click on it here. The, um, uh, so this is, uh, YouTube live, of course. Here, plug if, in. If you have more than, uh. If you plug in, I think they can see it. Oh, see we have now it. Because we both have HDMI connectors on our laptops. How it makes it so simple to just plug in. And in a moment, have I crashed your machine? <laughs> Possibly. No, no. In go. a moment, we'll see you Alex. See it? Yeah. Do you see that there, Chet? No. No. No, oh, I thought it was really easy when we had to get it set up before. Well, we can show it over the shoulder if you want. So the all I was going to so what basically, um, if you have more than 100 subscribers in YouTube... Um, to your channel, you can for free stream live. It's a little There's lag. This, I just started yeah, waving. It's your... forty two seconds or so behind. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, because it's it's re encoding. So you right. can you can stream in ten eighty p for Whoa. free to YouTube um, right now. Uh, and it's and all you need is hundred subscribers to your to your channel, which you know um, it used to be. At first, it was you had to be very special. <laughs> then you had to have a thousand, and then you had to have a hundred. Easier and easier, and so it's and gotten easier, easier and easier and yeah. easier as they've as they've gotten better. The the interface to starting, running, managing your your live streaming is pretty much, in, in my opinion, the best in the business, uh, or one of the best in the business as far as just being nice and easy. And it's a huge infrastructure, and you can you get a lot of the tools that you would get that are industrial. You can I can send I can do a primary stream, backup stream, so on and so forth. And about ninety ninety five percent of our live events are all on YouTube. Here's why the, the app, though, that I'm talking about, the pick, is not YouTube Live, which is amazing. It's Wirecast for YouTube, which is free. So um, so Wirecast is, of course, uh, a software uh, encoder, uh, but they have a free version that you can use with YouTube. And um, let me show And I don't know if I have the, the brand new version of this. I think they, they might have just changed it. But, uh, yeah, this says check out the new one. So this is a slightly older one, but, but definitely worth checking out. So if you get Live Enabled... Um, what you can do is essentially you can have up to three cameras, um, you know, that you can um, be cutting in between if you have the inputs. Uh, so they can be webcams. They can be so you can literally do this with with web cameras to stream to YouTube. Um, there we go. Someone's uh, there. Um, and uh, and then the setup is basically the same setup in a lot of ways that you would have there. There you go. Now, if you go down to there and say what encoder you're using, so you select encoder. Oh, 
there's there's the there's the level. So you can say 1080p, and then you can say select encoder, and there's a wirecast for YouTube, and then it'll tell you to download it, and you can download it right there. There you go. There's Mac or Windows. And, um, and then you can install it, and it'll give you a couple of different options. Now, of course, the cool thing about this is, is as you want to have more features, Wirecast, there's a studio version, there's a pro version, so you can keep on upgrading and adding more bits. But, um, you, know, with, uh, you know, with the very basic version, you don't have to know anything about encoding settings and, and ingest points and anything else. It just, it just does it, you know. And so uh, it is a really, really easy way for people to get into live streaming. Um, and now that it's so easy, uh, I mean, as far as it's cheap, it's, you know, it's something that I would definitely suggest. Um, anyway, so that's, that's my pick, Wirecast for YouTube. Very cool. Let's do it. Hi. <laughs> I'm on his See, show and, again. and in 42 seconds, it'll be there. Yeah, so. later. Which is cool. Just so you know why it's 42 seconds, it's taking a, a, 10, a 720p stream here and slicing it up into four different resolutions and then putting it up all for you. And wow. so so you can watch it on your phone and everything else. And so it's not it's something that that used to be very, um, when I used to do it, uh, in the old days, in the old days, it used to be very complicated. Make a, you make a lot of money showing people how to do that. Yeah. You shouldn't yeah. knock it. They're making it too easy. Anyway. Knock it off, YouTube. Uh, we are out of time, but we uh, do thank you very much, Renee Ritchie. iMore.com, that's the place to go for all the... I guess Absolutely. we won't have to worry about rumors now for a few months. I hope, Leo. I need a vacation. <laughs> you know what I need? I need a Mac Pro and I need an iPad a Mini. I, I mean, yeah, an iPad Mini with Retina display. It was yes. nice. Apple let us, you know, split up our purchases. You can buy one thing in October, one thing in November, one Still thing in uh, from the Retina. December. <laughs> That's probably why they did it, huh? So you think Black Friday? It could. It, when Apple says late in the month, I generally think it's the last possible minute of the last possible day in the last possible month. Yeah, that's late in the month means the 20th. Oh, and the, the chat room yeah. informed us, Leo, that Apple has put up its information government request PDF just moments ago. Okay. Detailing what they did with the NSA. Asking for information from the government, or they actually say, Report is on this government the result? Info request. Report on government information request, November 5th, 2013. It's a PDF file protecting personal data, advocating for greater transparency, uh -huh. requests from law enforcement. It's dull tables and a lot of text, but if you're interested, it's... But they did it, and that's what matters. They didn't put it on their front page, I might, I might point out. Report they didn't get the iPads a lot. So this is uh, something Google does, too, where they... Uh, actually, they, did they give you numbers here? Yeah, they do. They're giving us numbers of, as to how many requests there are by country, Google did this uh, first, and I think this kind of transparency is a very valuable way of keeping these government requests, um, you know, a little a little bit uh, in public instead of just behind the scenes. The United States, the total number of law enforcement account requests received, they can't say actual numbers. They could do ranges somewhere between 1 and 2,000. <laughs> the uh, number of accounts specified in the request, somewhere between two and 3,000. The number of accounts for which data was closed, somewhere between zero and 1,000. The number of account requests where Apple objected, somewhere between zero and 1,000. This is worthless, for the U.S. anyway. Yeah. Uh, number of account requests where non-content data was disclosed, somewhere between zero and 1,000. And I'm, I'm fascinated as we as we really watch this roll out is the just the incredible impact that Snowden has had on the whole yeah. the whole process because these guys were dealing with this all you know without being able to say anything and suddenly it's all something that can't be hidden anymore. And by the way, uh, Edward Snowden now is on Twitter. Wow, uh, the official Edward Snowden account. So if you uh, want to follow, uh, let me see if he's tweeted anything. Um, if you want to follow Edward Snowden, now you can. Um, don't show my. Oh, you can't show my screen because because uh, I have the HDMI. Even though it's not the HDMI, it's official. Snowden is the uh, is the Twitter handle, and his tweets. No, he's done three. The first was welcome this morning. This account has been hacked. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not so good. This is my official and personal Twitter page. The account is owned by my lawyer. Welcome this morning. The account has been hacked. Thanks. <laughs> and then finally, important news on NSA activity in Austria, Switzerland, and Poland to be leaked soon. Huh. Ed Snowden is not following me. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I want to thank you all for being here. We do Mac Break Weekly, 11 a.m. And I am, by the way, I am going to be, I am, I keep saying this, but I really, we're going to start this on time soon. <laughs> 
<laughs> I tried so hard, but then I lost my Nexus 5 under the covers, and I couldn't find it. And I had to search and search and search. Uh, but uh, normally, you know, from now on, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's 1900 UTC on twit.tv. You can watch live. We love you in the chat room. If you can't, don't worry about it. We got on-demand audio and video. And you know what? You can watch that exactly. Like right at 11 o'clock sharp if you want. Uh, that's available at twit.tv slash mbw and wherever podcasts are stored, aggregated, and delivered to your portable devices with alacrity. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Andy. Thank, Thank you, Alex. Now get back to work because you know what? Break time is over. <laughs>